Hi, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your own 20 meter dipole from scratch with parts that you have laying around at your house, most likely. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe and uh, hit that like button if I if there's any any content here that helps you. I'm sure there is some for the new new hams. For the old hams, this is probably all uh, old hat, but uh, you might enjoy it also. Okay, let me show you the tools you're going to need to build this antenna and the parts. And all the parts that I'm using here are basically stuff I have laying around the house. I have a roll of wire already. Um, let me just show you the parts. This is a IU. I don't know how you pronounce it. I got this off of Amazon. It's a really, really good um, $30. It costs $30, and it's really, really good soldering iron. You can buy extra tips for it in a kit when you look it up. Um, it's worked really well for me, so for 30 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong with this. All right, we're going to build this antenna for 20 meter band. So let's figure out. Um, so you have 468, 468 divided by, let's do 14100. 14 14.1 equals, and that's your full width, your uh, both sides. And then we're going to divide that by two to get each side. So 16 point roughly six feet. Um, I'm, and I did this on that because I, I probably want this up higher like 14, 250, somewhere in that area. And I know this will probably, since longer is lower in the band, so I did a lower in the band. That way I'll have enough wire most likely. And I'll probably fold this over. I'll cut, I'm gonna cut the wire for uh, at 17 feet, fold it over about 6 inches and go from there. I actually already already cut my wire. This is uh, speaker wire, zip wire, whatever you want to call it. It has uh, two wires, so I cut 17 feet. I'll split them and I'll have my two sides. So one of the tools you're going to have to have, most likely, is a, is a tape measure. You're going to need some tape. Tape the ends. Uh, this is really good. It's a Scotch brand, Super 33 Plus. Um, so that's a really good. That's really good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and use another one of these, like I did in my other antenna. Um, I'll cut. I'll cut this SMA side off, and we'll put a couple of connectors on it. So you're going to need four connectors. You don't have to have those, you could solder everything, but I'm going to use four so I can take things apart if I have to. I've got, uh, so this is this is heat shrink. And if you did want to make a link die pole, this is just a, a wire tie, one of the bigger wire ties, heavy duty wire tire, and I cut it about two inches, drill holes in the edges, and uh, that's what you're going to use to hold each link of the dipole together before you connect them and uh, that works really well it's real lightweight so it doesn't take much on your pole you need some cutters and strippers these are, just, these are pretty decent ones I can't complain about them and then I've got some crimpers because I'll crimp it I'll crimp the connectors and then I'll also uh, solder them and when I do these connectors I, I personally just pull the, the insulator part off and, and use heat shrink over it. Just kind of makes things a little a little smaller. It's not doesn't make a huge difference. You can do it whatever you want to with that actually. Okay. Um, so I decided since most people would have a T for PVC, um, I'm going to cut this in half, and then I'll drill my holes in it. And uh, let me do that. Okay, I, I went ahead and cut it, cut it in half, as you can see. Um, I put a couple screws in the middle here. And then what I'll end up doing is I'll feed my wire through these holes for uh, strain relief. And I'm, I'm going to end up up here so I can curve it up and down. In the top of it, I, I drilled a hole which 
actually fits my mast. It'll go over it in about the second, I think it's the second section down because it's a little bit stronger right there. I think I actually took the top one out and that'll hold it on there. And usually I put a piece of tape on it just in case your pole bends over, um, then it doesn't fall off. And this build, I'm not going to do a ballon. You don't, you can put a ballon in if you want. Uh, actually, I think the, the way to go if you're going to have multiple antennas would be the ones with the beads where they have the little section and you just screw it in between your coax and your antenna. I think in the long run, if you have multiple antennas, that's the, probably the cheapest way to go. Also, let me uh, let me grab the the pole that we're going to build this on, um, and I'll, let me show that to you. Okay, I found this these poles. They're uh, what they are is Tenkara uh, fly fishing rods, Japanese fly fishing rod, and this company is called Go Tour High Performance. Um, that's what you want to look up. And I bought the Gold Light and I bought the the super hard. Do not put that in your uh, when your search though, because you'll come up with things you won't want to see, or you might. I don't know. You'll come up with things that you, you're not looking for. But the gold light one, 7.2 meters, so it's a little over 21 feet. It, it it it's a little stiffer at the top, so it should be. It, I think it would do a better job than the other models they had for uh, not bending over too much with the weight of the antenna. So 7.2 meter. Um, they're pretty cool. I actually bought one of their small ones to take backpacking with me to go fly fishing with that. Uh, I think this thing was like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 15 dollars, something like that. I forget exactly, but it's not very expensive. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put some solder on the, the ends of the wires. Now, when you're doing small stuff, it does help to have some small solder. This stuff is. Uh, 6040 rosin core 0 0.032 got this from radio shack before they they closed all right the first thing i'm going to do is uh solder the wires put a little solder on the wires so that makes it easier later to uh, solder it in the connectors so usually i'll prime with a little bit of on there Just turn this thing on so it may not be hot. There we go. All right. We'll let those cool just a little bit and then we'll crimp them. Okay, so we'll put this in here. I'll push it up against the, uh, the insulation. Just crimp it. And I'll do that for both of them. Okay, let's put a little solder on these connectors. Yeah, let me clean that off. Now you want to make sure you get the solder to flow and eventually you'll see it flow in there. I usually put it right back in there also. Nice, see the nice flow there. The small wire is a little harder because it's, uh, it's only like 26 gauge. But once you get it warm enough, it'll, it'll just flow. There we go. I'm just going to put a little heat shrink. My heat shrink's a little bit big, but it'll it does pretty good. It's close. Didn't realize I was out of the right sizes, but that works pretty good. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It should be about focus there. Okay. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this. We're going to cut this SMA connector off. And I like these. They're easy. 
you're not, not much loss there because it's not very long. But at least when you have this, you don't have to have a barrel connector. So if you've, if you've ever gone out and forgot your barrel connector, it's not a fun thing. So but let's cut this. So I always cut it somewhere so it's usable on both sides. So I would just usually just take one of these and lightly just kind of spin it in there. You don't want to cut through the braid. That's the problem. Sorry. I'm trying to keep this in shot. And I got lucky. No, no braid came off. And then you got to, basically you got to pick this stuff back. Then you need to take, if you can see that clear part there, that's the, that's the center coax insulator. So we're basically going to do the same thing there again. There we go. So what I want to do is I want to pull, I don't want that down there. Got to be careful not to get the outside shield tangled up in, in intertwined with the, uh, you don't want to get it mixed with the uh, center one because then you have a short. Basically we're going to do the same thing with this as we did with the, the wires. So, so one of your wires will go to here, one of your wires will go to here. And that'll be your two legs of your antenna. So we're going to do the, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to put a little solder on these to make them connect a little bit easier. It's always good to get a little on your tip first. I can tell you right now that on my other one I tried to get heat shrink on this and it's pretty much impossible. So actually a little of that of the uh, liquid tape is probably the, the easiest thing to do on here. It's just too short. There's no place to put stuff. And one thing I have found on these connectors, if you heat these a little bit, I don't know if you can see this or not. It'll come right, usually it'll come right off. I didn't heat it very much. And usually you can just pull that right off. But it gets hot. And like before, we just get a little bit of flow there. That's all it takes. Now that should be all the soldering we do in this, this whole setup. And I'll try to get some, if right there, I'm going to get some tape in between those two so they don't contact each other. There is a little bit of insulation if you, you can't really see it, but there's a little insulation from the inner one, the center core that uh, is still there. So that should be fine. And these will just connect here. I'm just going to make sure they don't touch. But let me get my wires. Um, and what I'll probably do is drill a couple holes here and here. Probably one up there, one down there, same on both sides. And then run some yeah, a wire tie through it just to, to secure that to the, the PVC. Okay, see so here we have everything. I wrap the wires through the holes. 
I'm going to take later, I'm going to take and uh, put um, some hot glue on there to hold this part down just to do that. And then probably put a little hot glue over the top of this. You can always get it off later if you have to. You can see I ran, I drilled two, four holes, ran some, a um, couple small ties through there just to, just to kind of give that a little bit of strain relief there also. And then your two wires will come out the size like this. Now on the ends, I measured up six inches, like I said, twisted it, and then tied it off with some tape. And always leave yourself a little double over your tape here. Uh, you won't believe how hard that is to find when you're in a hurry to undo it. So what we'll do is I'll hook some, I'm, I'm just gonna hook some, um, some kind of small rope to the end of this to tune it. And then we'll set it up on the, uh, the pole, tune it, um, take some readings on it and see where it's at. I probably will use my analyzer to give us an idea of where we're at, but I'll also try to show how to do it with a, um, with an SWR meter also. It's, it's, not, it's not real hard. You could do it with your radio if you had to, but uh, uh, an analyzer is the easiest, but if you don't have it, they're expensive. So I just wanted to show you this. Uh, this is what I guy my mast with. I just take a hole saw. I think it's like a three, three and a half inch hole saw and cut it out. And then I drill the middle to where I want it to, um, where I want it to rest on the, uh, the pole itself on which section. And then I just, for my own good, I, I marked where the guys go. And these are, this is, this was an experimental thing that I'm doing with a super light DX commander type antenna. And I haven't got it perfected yet, so uh, but I'm just going to use this for my for my mast to to guide it out. And I and I use these little these are uh, they're a copy of an MSR stake. Uh, they're eight bucks for ten of them or something like that on Amazon. And then just some some rope, some paracord. All right, I'll get this set up and we'll we'll string it out and see what it does. Okay, I, uh, I checked it one time already and uh, went ahead and took the six inches off of each side that I added. And uh, now it's 14.075. Uh, Our SWR is 1.0203, something like that. And then let's, we'll scan it here. And that's the middle, that's the lowest point, so. Here's a scan. So not too bad, but it's too low for what I want uh, in the band, that's for sure. And uh, so what we need to do, since it's low in the band, that means the antenna is long, so we need to shorten it some more. And uh, I'll go ahead and shorten it probably about two inches on each side, and we'll see where it's at. Okay, I took uh, about one, about two inches off of each side, each leg, and now we'll we're at the same place we were on the uh, fourteen oh seven five, and we'll run a scan now. And it does look like we moved it up to band some. So with this meter, you can just take this, run the arrow all the way to there it looks like that's going to be our lowest point anyhow and that's 14225 so let's we'll run, we'll run a scan again yeah it's just a little bit farther back so let's look so 14207 1.01 So what you're really looking for is X to be as close to zero. That's 0 0.4. That's pretty close. Uh, it, it varies a little bit, but uh, f right at 50 ohms and um, 0.6 looks like average there on the uh, on the X. All right, still a little lower than lower than I want. So 
we'll probably move it up, but maybe we'll uh, try doing it with the um, with the SWR meter now that we're close. So I, I didn't touch the antenna since the last time that we checked it on the analyzer, but I put it on this. This is like the one of the probably cheapest SWR meters I have. And what you do is you set it to calculate. And I'm on 100 watts. I wouldn't usually do this on 100 watts, but I've already done it just to test it to make sure this thing worked. So I, I would hit this, and it's already, you set this knob here to calibrate. It's calibrated. Then you set this to SWR, and you hit the button again. It just barely moved at 14,230. And there was nobody on the band, so. And I'm just going to go all the way up to the top of the band. There's 345. Do the same thing, calculate, still good. And I hope you guys can see that, but the, the needle didn't even move. Testing KK6 USY. So also, I don't know if you guys can see the uh, See, I'm on AM right now. So if you can see the, this is my SWR meter on the radio. And right now it's showing S5, and that's that's the noise right now. So when I press this, it should show SWR, because I'm set to SWR. And it, it, it doesn't even show anything. Watch. See, it says SWR. Same thing here at 30. We're looking here. It says SWR, and nothing still. So I'm not going to touch this. I mean... I was going to try and adjust it better, but I did go back and check the uh, on the analyzer, and it was like 1.13 at 350, so at 14.350. So I mean, and it's covering the band no problem at all. So I checked the bands. There's really nobody there. Um, before I was, I was only probably getting about um, 25, 30 watts because it was on AM. This is FM, 100 watts. Um, this will be your power going this way. This will be your SWR over here. It won't move. 100 watts, nothing. Um, so 345. I'll listen for a second. Hang on. Is this frequency in use? KK6 USY? Back on FM 345, 100 watts, nothing. Perfect SWR. I don't, I don't know if I've ever done an antenna this this good the whole way on the band. So I, I will not be moving it. It's plenty good enough. And I think if uh, if we're down in the, uh, the CW portion, it'll still be good too. Also, let's see. Yeah, still good. Okay, and uh, that's this is a if you guys if you ever want to buy a really good this is a Daiwa Charlie Nancy dash eight zero one eight zero one HP type really good it does uh, up to two hundred megahertz so you can do quite a bit with it and it's it's really accurate. Okay, typically this is how I'll finish off an antenna. I'll hook uh, paracord to the end of this. If you look down here. Uh, I, I put a little bit of heat shrink right there to make it just a little stronger than heat shrink, heat shrink, and then uh, heat shrink over the end out here. That's typically how I'll do it. You can put a piece of PVC at the end, whatever you want, piece of wood, doesn't matter. I've never had a problem with any, I've never ever had a problem with um, just hooking para, thin paracord to the end of it. Well, thanks for watching the video today. I hope you got something out of it, and if you did, hit that like button and subscribe, and also hit that bell. 
it'll it'll let you know when I'm gonna post new videos and uh, I've got videos coming up on a portable uh, battery box for my radios I got two different ones actually and also I'm gonna I think I'm gonna make a six meter dipole uh, a rotatable dipole that somebody can throw on like uh, a couple fence posts or fence rails you know the fence rails that you get at Home Depot get them up about 20 feet and when six meters open anybody can have good luck with that and uh, you know five watts on a good opening will get you across the United States sometimes not that I've ever done that but I've made it to Tennessee from California so thanks for joining us Don't hit that like button and that subscribe thank you KK6USY Chuck